Okay, so in this video, we are gonna do um, range of motion with a goniometer for wrist flexion. Should we separate flexion and extension? Or just do one video? Okay, that's what we're doing. And then we're gonna do MMT for flexion and extension. So the primary method that we use is this one. So the elbow, the electron process is in the bed, the table, um, the forearm is perpendicular to the floor. And then I'm gonna have you bring your wrist down this way. So the uh, fulcrum is gonna go over capitate. So I'm gonna find that third metacarpal, follow it down to the wrist, tiny little bit toward the thumb side. There's that little divot, which I can find when I extend. And then I'm gonna have you come back down. So fulcrum goes over capitate. Stationary arm has to touch the third metacarpal, uh, sorry, the third MCP joint and the stationary arm has to be touching the dorsum of the forearm. So if it looks like this, that's wrong because there's a gap. Or if it looks like this, that's wrong because there's a gap. So you've, even, if, even if there's a gap here, it's fine as long as the two arms are flush against the body. And so she's reading right there about 76 degrees of flexion. Now, if she had a cyst or edema or um, like a dislocated carpal bone, then I can't do this method, then I wouldn't be able to use this method. So then we go to the alternate method, which is hanging over the edge of the bed here. Um, so now triquetrum is where we're putting our fulcrum. I'm not gonna pretend that I'm palpating these carpals and like, oh, there it is. Honestly, I, I don't know, I think it's in there. What I know is it's where the wrist bends. Do you know what I mean? Where the wrist moves is where you're putting your fulcrum. Your stationary arm goes to the olecranon process. And then go ahead and bend your wrist down as far as it'll go. This moving arm is uh, along the lateral midline of that fifth metacarpal. You have so much more now in, uh, in this position. It's funny, the person I measured the other day had the same exact amount in both, in oh. both methods. Yeah, you're getting it like 84 now. Interesting, right? Yeah. Okay, let's do extension. So extension is going back. So same thing, fulcrum goes over capitate. So you find capitate dorsally and you just wrap your thumb around and you're like, oh, okay, that's the equivalent of it anteriorly. And I'm gonna have you bring your wrist back. And same thing. This has to go flush along the anterior midline of her forearm. Now, I don't put this along the third finger because some people don't have a lot of neural mobility and I don't wanna cause issues. So I tuck it right next to the finger and you're getting 78 degrees of extension. And again, if there was some reason that I couldn't use my primary method, I would go alternate method. So hand hanging over the bed. Oh, oh same position. Um, and everything is lined up the exact same way for extension as it was for flexion. So lateral aspect of that triquetrum, which is technically medial actually, if we're looking at anatomic position, olecranon process. And I'm gonna have you bring your wrist up. The issue here is that she's moving against gravity, right? This has to be parallel to that fifth um, metacarpal. And so I'm getting, I lost my zero, hold on, uh, about, about 80. What did I just measure you for here? Four, but I was with gravity. Well, this is against gravity. All right, so now let's do some MMT. So MMT for, we'll do flexion first. So flip on over because the grade three is always against gravity. So she needs to be supinated so that when she flexes, she's against gravity. So I'm gonna have you bring your hand up all the way up. Great, I'm gonna try to push your hand back down and you're not gonna let me do it. So my resistance is here, trying to push her back down and it's on her palm. My resistance should not cross her MCP joints because then I'm crossing joints and that's like a big no-no. Um, Patricia, can you, thank you. Um, then this hand is gonna be underneath, I'll wait to show you till the lights come back on. When you turn them off, you have to leave them off for like two seconds and then flip them on. Thank you. So stabilization is going up, resistance is going down. Make sure that you do not cross the MCP joints. Don't let me push your hand down. Stay strong, stay strong. Good. So that's the against gravity, um, three, four, and five. If we wanted to test for two, we would get her into gravity eliminated. So now she's forearm neutral. And now when she flexes, it's gonna be gravity eliminated. So if she can do that, that's her two. 
Um, again, more than half but not all of it is two minus. Some of it, not even half, is a one plus. And if I need to measure for a one or a zero, I'm gonna palpate her wrist flexors that cross right anteriorly at the wrist by palpating there, having her try to bend her wrist. If she can't do it, but you see or feel activity here, it's a one, nothing is a zero. For extension, she needs to be pronated and hanging off the table because when she's pronated, now when she extends, it's against gravity. So go ahead and bring your hand up. I'm gonna to try to push your hand back down. Don't let me do it. So stabilization is here. Resistance is back here. Again, I'm not crossing the MCP joints. Don't let me push you down. Stay strong, stay strong, good. And then if she couldn't do that, then we need to get her into gravity eliminated. So forearm neutral. And now when she brings her wrist back, she doesn't have to fight against gravity. So that's her two or her two minus or her one plus, depending on how far she goes. And if she can't move at all, now I'm gonna palpate back here, dorsally where the wrist extensors cross the wrist. So I'm palpating back here. And can you bring your wrist back? And if she can't, but I can see or feel anything happening here, it's a one. And if I don't see or feel anything, she's earned a zero.